So to give you an example of what we mean by analytics everywhere and how that makes all of our products so much more powerful and completely differentiated from what else is out in the market, I'm going to show you a couple of demos. So let's start with APM and error analytics. OK, so um, the errors feature in New Relic APM is our second or third most popular feature. I know that because I wrote an insights query to tell me that. I know exactly how many people use errors and how they use errors and how it correlates to what people spend on our products and how often they log in. So that's just an aside about why we decided to invest in beefing up our errors functionality, because we use data to know that that's something that you use and value. But our first generation errors technology indexed on a couple things. We indexed on things that we anticipated you might want to ask about. For example, the, the name of the error or the type of the error, and, and maybe the, the web transaction that the error happened on. Those are two good things to index on, but now you don't have to worry about that. You can slice and dice your errors any way you want. So first of all, there's this kind of fancy new UI for looking at errors that shows kind of how the heat map of errors by type. But if I look over here, I can see that I am grouping errors right now by error class, which is pretty similar to how our previous functionality works. But what's up here, and what I want you all to look out for in our products, because you're going to see this in more and more of our pages and products over time, there's this little magic funnel. Think of this as like the big data slicer dicer that makes insights do magical things for you under the covers. Or sorry, NRDB do magical things for you under the covers. So right now, I am segmenting by error class. And I can look at how that's doing. And I can see that there's a spike. This green spike's kind of interesting to me just because it's spiky. So I want to kind of in investigate this. So this green spike is net open timeout. Hmm, that seems like a, an, a networking error. So when I click on it, what we see up here next to this filter is now I've basically scoped all the data I'm showing to saying error class is this. But with the power of NRDB, I can slice and dice in a variety of other ways. So for example, since this feels like a networking problem, I want to look at something like remote address. So down here, I've got some extra custom, uh, custom attributes in my error events that are just automatically collected into error events. And so if I click on remote address, I see that this actually disproportionately is coming from a sing single IP. That's interesting to me. I see that 80, of, uh, 80 of, these, uh, of all of these errors are coming from one IP address. So again, I'll click on that and look over here. I see that now this is its further scope now. So I've got net or, uh, open timeouts from this remote address. So now I'm wondering, OK, if it's all coming from one address, does this mean that it's all coming from one user? At this point, I should be sharing with you, this is all error data from our staging environment, which we intentionally beat up and throws off lots of errors. So I don't want you worrying of as to whether or not the new relic you're using has all these error timeouts. That wouldn't make for an interesting demo if I was showing production. Um, but anyway, let's see what users are actually encountering this error. It's all coming from one IP address. So I'd expect this to be all affecting one user, but I'm wrong. Wow, this actually is affecting lots of users, some more than others. But it's now it's kind of apparent to me that this error is actually um, coming from uh, maybe, maybe, maybe those users are all coming through the same proxy server. Um, so I'll just uh, go into one last way to kind of slice and dice it. I'm going to break it out by server or host. And I see, again, wow, a disproportionate number of errors coming from one server. So it feels like this one server is having network problems talking to something else. So why don't I look at the traces? I've now fur I've further scoped down to what I need. Underneath the covers, you can't imagine how much churning away that NRDB does to just make all this work. Um, and, uh, but let's look at the, the traces themselves. And I can look at a specific one and see that, hmm, this is all timing out on login. And after inspecting a, queue of, a few of these, I can say, all right, there's a network problem between this application and the login service, which gives me, and I know exactly which users are impacted by it. This is super powerful stuff. It's stuff that nobody else has been able to do, and we're very excited to announce it for you today. So that's error analytics. <laughs> but while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly move over to another example of how you might use this which is 
What about the browser? What about page load events and looking at how our users experience? What if we could do that same kind of power? Because it's all coming into the same platform, we can do this for the end customer experience as well. So here's my magic little filter box up here. And I'm looking at um, you know, our global page view activity, again, for New Relic software. And we can see um, page load time varying throughout the world. I can change what I'm looking at. I can, for example, look at the number of sessions. Or I can look at network time. Why don't we look at network time? And this might help us make decisions on where we should invest in networking infrastructure um, and, and perhaps local data center presence based on what we see on end user experience by network time. Well, again, I see on the left here that I can slice and dice in ways that are arbitrary and it's going to be fast. So why don't I kind of show network time by ASN organization. ASN is just a three-letter acronym. It means like your internet service provider, essentially. It's your ISP performance. Um, and I can see network performance by ISP. And some companies are big enough that they are their own ISP. Um, but why don't we look at, just for fun, BT public internet service. And so once I, I've selected that, you can see now I've, I've scoped this now just to BT. And I, it's unsurprising that all of the traffic now is in the United Kingdom. That's what you would expect, of course. So now we're looking at BT performance. I further scoped it to United Kingdom. And I can go back and I can break this out by operating system. And so here I see, I can see Mac network performance in the United Kingdom. And underneath the, oops, underneath the covers, We've got all of that just underneath the covers. NRDB is, again, doing ama amazing amounts of horsepower work for you so that you can really slice and dice and understand what's going on in your, in your user experience. That's kind of a pro. I've shown you two proactive use cases of I want to get ahead of problems. I want to make big, big, better decisions so that the future is going to be bright for our customer experience. But if you've been in uh, production firefighting situations, IT off situations, the reality is sometimes you just got to react quickly. Sometimes you got to react quickly. And the common case can be somebody's complaining about a site problem. So what if that somebody is your CEO? What if I bug my people and say, I'm not having a great customer experience using our own products and send everyone scrambling in our Portland office? Well, here we go. Here's a view of my experience using this software. Again, we drop no data events, so we can see everything, including everything that Lou did. So unsurprisingly, my activities come from California. I've had some activity from my home in San Mateo area and some activity in San Francisco. And again, I can break it out by ASN. And I can show the page load time. I can show the, the operating system performance. I can also show whether or not this is specific back-end time for me or front-end time or, or, uh, or network time. So now you can actually diagnose a customer-specific issue. You can also do that with errors. If, an, if a customer calls in and says, I'm having errors, blam, type in their name, type in whatever. We'll look up that customer, put in the customer ID, and all of a sudden you see their errors, you see their performance. This is a game changer. This is only possible when you keep all the data. And it's only possible and usable if all that data is instantly available to you. And we think that's only really possible in New Relic. So that's, that's pretty awesome stuff. So that is New Relic Browser Analytics. <laughs> you know, if you look at our software analytics cloud, one of the things you, you may have noticed is that in the past when we've shown this diagram, it was a collection, a horizontal collection of boxes where every box was a product. But if you notice, what we've done is we've kind of moved insights to the bottom. Insights is still this awesome product you can, you can buy and use, but it's a different kind of product. And so I want to explain our product strategy and how we're going to take this powerful technology and address more and more of your needs and use cases and problems. Across the top, every one of these products across the top are really curated user experiences curated user, uh, user interfaces that are specifically designed to solve a specific problem. So in the two demos I just showed there, I showed a browser curated user experience where it was showing the map and all that stuff where I can, I can look up networking problems. And it was super easy to use and slice and dice that data for that specific use case of, of geographical uh, networking performance. And then on errors and APM, similar sort of thing. 
but there are times when you need granular ad hoc answers that are not in the scope of our curated products. And that's where Insights comes in. So we think of Insights as this horizontal product that can be used to address all sorts of interesting business use cases. Um, and the weapon of choice, the way you get at these granular ad hoc queries and insights is through the scalpel that we call NRQL. Super easy to use query language. Here's an example of a query that, let's say you have an e-commerce site, you want to see how many people are adding items to the cart in the kids and baby department. And facet item means break that out by the item. So I can see my most popular items that people are adding to carts. And Insights will dutifully scan through as many events as have run through your data center. And we'll give you that answer instantly. But that, um, I love that query language. But our vision for Insights is to be used by everyone. I want every knowledge worker who has an interest and a stake in the healthy application to be able to get at this data too. And so. Um, while today you can use that query to get that answer, today you can also use a new and very exciting approach to get the very same answer, and that's the New Relic Visual Data Explorer, which is going to be a game changer for us and for Insights. This is going to make it so easy for you to see exactly what's going on in your business. So who'd like to see a demo of the Visual Data Explorer? Someone was like jumping up and down with their arms up. That, that, that level of excitement makes my day. So let's go to the beginning. I am going gonna, gonna to show an e-commerce site. This is um, simulated data we've created that is an, app, an accurate representation of the type of data that would go through an e-commerce site. So what I mean by that is the Data Explorer can look at any events that you collect into New Relic. By default, we collect page views and transactions, and now we're collecting errors, and, and other things will go into NRDB. But now you can construct um, queries and get answers to your questions in real time by just clicking along. So I want to look at the number of page views in the last day. And I can count page view events. Of course, this is all super fast. But I can also say, well, how many usernames in the last day? This is unique, unique users. And again, just by clicking on that, I get my answer. But I don't want to just see how many users are on the site. I actually want to see how many users are doing a specific thing. For example, if we look at transaction name, we see um, this breaks out by the specific transaction name. And maybe I'll zoom in to make sure this is all kind of clear to you. So this is breaking out by transaction name. And I can say, I want to see. How many people are clicking on items? So by, by selecting that, I have now said how many people are clicking on items in my e-commerce store. And that's up here. It's a very familiar feeling to all our other products. And now I'm kind of interested in what are the popular products. So I'm actually going to select a department and say, I'm particularly interested in our kids and baby department. It's a profitable part of our business. Um, John just had a baby on Friday from, uh, from our IR team. So everybody, round of applause for John and his baby. What was John browsing on, on here? Well, this, is, this, this isn't real data, so I don't have John's in there. But we can look at what people are looking at. So let's now look at the most popular items in the thing. Oh, cool. The most popular thing on our site is the lobster bib. Who knew that lobster bibs were so popular in our e-commerce shop? This is actually not just interesting. It helps me transform the business. Because now what if I put a lobster bib on the home page? That, that can increase sales. And I use data to answer that question in real time. Right? This is in a, a report that comes out next week. And it's all in the same database that has all the performance issue to, information too. So I'm saying how many users purchase lobster bibs. But if I wanted to, I could also say, I'm actually interested in um, the back end duration. How long does it take 95th percentile to do that? So I've got the, I've got this, the performance data. What I just did there is I am now 95th percentile of the response time of just those lobster bib items. Right? That's super powerful. Nobody's been able to do that prior to today. And if you. If you notice, up here, all along, we've been just creating a query for you. So if you want, you can edit this query to fine-tune to uh, to to fine it, to configure it, 
to, and, and before long, you may become an NRQL expert if you want to use, it, use that flexibility. It's kind of like some people prefer VI to write their code. Other people prefer IDEs. This is like the IDE of NRDB. Um, and, and it's going to make New Relic Insights available to all of the knowledge workers in your company. So that's super powerful. So that's the in, uh, Insights Visual Data Explorer. <laughs> that's shipping today. And when you think about how powerful Insights is, one of the things I love about it is how it can address so many different use cases. You know, if you, if you keep around a week of data, that's great for production troubleshooting, which is kind of the hallmark of New Relic. If something's wrong in production, I need to know what's going, going on right now. And so I'm going to collect all the data for a week so I can troubleshoot really well for problems that are going on right now. But as you get more advanced with Insights, if you want to understand what's going on in your e-commerce store, if you want to do customer support, you may keep a lot more data for longer periods of time for those use cases. But we're so excited about Insights, which is an incredibly sticky, powerful product that is doing very well. We're seeing wonderful adoption rates. But we feel like we're going to go all in and really owning the market that we're defining here. So what we are announcing today is something that I think you're all going to be very excited. If you are a New Relic paid subscriber, if you have any of our products, we are going to give you, with your subscription, bundled into your subscription, one week of New Relic Insights data for production troubleshooting. That's going to be awesome. Imagine that with Visual Data Explorer. Add a few attributes to those events coming through, and you can use it for production troubleshooting, but you can also show the last week's business activity with the same product. Super powerful stuff. We think it's going to be um, sh send shockwaves through, through, through our competitive space and, and really, at the end of the day, enable you to connect the business outcome with the software health. So before I finish with demos, I want to show you one last demo of what's possible. All this stuff is stuff that um, is either shipping today, like Visual Data Explorer, or is going to be in beta very soon. But looking a little further out, I, I challenged the team to build a killer demo of what if we, what could we really do to like rethink um, APM if we and 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 browser if we were to go all in on on this database that is so powerful. And I got the team to kind of build me a killer demo that I'm going to show for you right now. So this is a prototype that is actually working with real data. This is our New Relic application performance. And what should be pretty interesting to all of you is it's up to the second real time. You know, we're, you know, the days of waiting to see what happened a minute ago are over, or will be soon. We're showing real time APM again arbitrarily filterable. And because we're collecting all the data points, we can do more than just show this nice stacked area chart that shows how the response time is doing on average. We can do really cool things like heat maps in real time. Super valuable way to kind of get a sense of are there patterns of distribution of response time. Again, only possible if you're able to do big data in real time the way New Relic can do in our, in our super cluster. And so this is the APM view. Why don't we hop on over to browser? We get a similar view for browser. And again, because we've got this little filter box, all of this can be arbitrarily sliced and diced. So here, why don't we look at our heat map again for how we're doing in, on our page load times for our customers. Why don't we just say, how's it doing in San Francisco? And we get this pretty cool heat map. But now, th that doesn't even look like a heat map, because every, every, every dot on that is just one page view transaction. Since we're collecting all the data, why don't we just look at the real transactions flowing through San Francisco right now? Every dot in here is a real page load showing the second it comes in. So, and I can further break this down. Now if I say, well, how are my beloved New Relic employees doing using our stuff? So I'll just say, uh, and why don't I take out San Francisco? We've got a lot of employees outside of San Francisco, too. So here are the New Relic employees using our software right now. Again, imagine a real time. Someone's on the phone saying, I'm having trouble using your site. And it's like, I see the transactions right now. I can say, oh, who is this uh, unfortunate soul? A10. Ha! 
Atan's our lead designer that's been on the hook for building all these. I wouldn't be surprised if he found a way, let me pause this, found a way to simulate a slow page load just because he wanted the airtime. This is the Johnny Ive of New Relic. He's, uh, he's a genius <laughs> designer who, who doesn't like that kind of uh, accolade in public. Um, anyway, here's Atan's uh, transaction history. I can see everything Atan did. I've not dropped a single data point. And again, now I can see the specific customer experience, what they're doing in time. You can imagine the power of where this is going now, where I can see every, every customer interaction. Unlike other great products like Google Analytics, which sample and drop data, this collects it all. Super powerful stuff. So that is where we're headed. And this is, this is something I'm excited to have the product team uh, work hard on productizing for all of you. So that's, that's a sneak peek of where we're headed.